Howdy, it's Kyle with another installment of Oddities of U.S. Geography. This is the third video in this series, and I'll leave links to the other two in the description if you want to check those out. But this being the third video in this series, not all of these are truly oddities. That's why I've added the word quirks in the title. But either way, to take a look at some interesting quirks and features of U.S. Geography. The first one that I'm going to mention is about Alaska's location relative to the rest of the U.S. As most Americans know, Alaska is the northernmost state in the U.S., with the northern third of the state being north of the Arctic Circle. But Alaska is also the westernmost state in the U.S. The Aleutian Island chain, which extends southwest from mainland Alaska, extends farther west than the westernmost islands of Hawaii. And the Aleutian Island chain is so long it extends even farther west than that to the point where it crosses the international date line. Attu Island is the westernmost portion of Alaska, but it's so far west that it's actually east. And even though Attu Island is west of the international date line, it operates as if it were east of the date line. That way it's never too confusing. Attu is always on the same day as the rest of Alaska. But technically speaking, that makes Alaska the northernmost, westernmost, and easternmost state in the U.S. From the cold of Alaska to the tropics of Hawaii, let's take a look at some of their highways. If you look on a road map of Hawaii, you will notice that there are interstate highways there. At first, that might seem very strange, being that interstate means it would have to connect multiple states, and of course you cannot drive from Hawaii to another state. However, Hawaii receives the same type of federal funding for roads as all the other states, so for interstate highways, it has to have a special condition. And they're simply numbered 1, 2, 3, but they all have the letter H in front of it. And there's some good info out there about the engineering and construction of H3, and that goes through a beautiful stretch of rainforest, through some tunnels, and it might very well be the most beautiful interstate drive in the country. But yeah, Hawaii has interstate highways. Staying in Hawaii, let's talk about its smallest county, Kalawao County. The area was originally set aside as a quarantine for people with leprosy. And this goes back before the days that Hawaii was a state. But when Hawaii became a state, this area became its own county. There has always been a very small population there. At the 2020 census, there was a total of 82 people. At the 2010 census, it was the least populous county in the country. However, it's only the second least populous now. And that's because the least populous county in the country is Loving County, Texas. This is in the southwestern portion of the state right along the New Mexico border. At the 2020 census, there was a population of 64 people, down from 82 in 2010. Like most of the rest of rural Texas, the county is losing population. However, going from 82 to 64 in 10 years, there really isn't that much more room for it to go. There are countless number of ghost towns in the U.S., but I've never heard of a county losing all of its population. I've driven through the county, and the largest town, I guess you could say, is called Mentone. It's really small. It's basically just a collection of houses and a few trailers. And yet, it's its own county. Next, I want to talk about where Canada borders France. There's a small portion of France that borders Canada just to the southwest of the province of Newfoundland. And these are a couple of small islands that are French territories called St. Pierre and Miquelon. And these two little islands are the last piece of the old New France colony of North America. So you think about Quebec and Canada and Louisiana and all this territory in North America that France had. Well, all they have left is these two little islands. So if you're an American looking to get to France at the shortest distance possible, this is it. Next, I want to talk about Sand Mountain, Alabama. This is the most densely populated rural part of the country. That might sound like an oxymoron, but there are approximately 100,000 people that live on Sand Mountain, and it's entirely rural. It isn't really a mountain, it's actually a ridge, but it does look kind of like a mountain. If you look at this map, the area just east of the Tennessee River and west of Interstate 59 is approximately what you call Sand Mountain. And on top of the mountain, or the ridge, is basically one long chain of towns connected almost like a bunch of train cars. So there'll be a really small town of maybe a thousand or so people, maybe a mile of open space, and another small town of 2,000 people. There may be a couple of miles of space, there may be a town of 500 people, maybe a couple of miles of space, there may be a town of 3,000 people, and it goes on like this for quite a while. The biggest town in this region is called Rainsville, and there's only about 5,000 people in the entire town. And the drive through this area is very interesting. It's about 50 miles or so, and again, it's all just really small towns. But they all add up to about 100,000 people, which makes it the most densely populated part of rural America. So let's stay in the same part of the country for this next quirk. So the area around Sand Mountain is about a half an hour or so southwest of Chattanooga, where I live. 
There are many city and county and state borders in the U.S. that are not quite right because they were done with old type of technology and the survey wasn't quite correct. However, the vast majority of these involve very small areas and very few people live in the areas that would be disputed. However, arguably the most consequential of all of these surveying errors is the one right around Chattanooga. Essentially, the error is that Georgia is supposed to extend about a mile farther north than it currently does. And this would have huge consequences for two reasons. One, it would put portion of the Tennessee River in Georgia and thus allow Georgia to have access to water in the river. There was a huge drought around 2007, 2008, and Georgia was running low on water. So they dusted off some old books and ledgers and realized that Georgia is supposed to extend north and is supposed to have access to the Tennessee River. And the state of Georgia almost sued the state of Tennessee to gain access to the river. But it wouldn't just be consequential in terms of water. If all of the previous surveying errors were fixed based on using current technology, this one being fixed would cause the most number of people to have to move states. Perhaps as many as 100,000 people would be moved from Tennessee to Georgia if this line were fixed. Between a big change in water availability and a big shift in population, fixing this survey would be a huge deal. Another interesting state border involves an exclave of Delaware. If you look at this map, there's a small part that looks like it might be part of New Jersey, but it's actually part of Delaware. This area is known as Finn's Point, and it's most known for having a national cemetery there. However, in the 20th century, the Army Corps of Engineers was dredging out a part of the channel to make it easier for ships to navigate the Delaware River. As a result, some of this dredged land resurfaced on the east banks of the Delaware River. However, based on the charter and how the original state boundaries were drawn, this would have to be part of Delaware. And so that's why you had this little exclave of Delaware across the Delaware River attached to New Jersey. Next, I want to talk about Interstate 19 in Arizona. This is a regular interstate that connects the city of Tucson to the Mexican border and the cross-border town of Nogales. But why I-19 is so interesting is that the mile markers are actually kilometer markers. It's the only interstate in the U.S. that exclusively uses the metric system. There are quite a few interstates in the country that have both miles and kilometers marked on them, but I-19 is metric only. The interstate was built at a time when the U.S. was considering shifting to the metric system. Just think if people wouldn't have been so reluctant back then to switch that by now it had been completely normal for us to be using metric, which is the way it should be. But as it is, Interstate 19 is the closest thing we got. Next, I want to talk about the D.C. suburbs of Arlington and Alexandria, Virginia. You look at this map here and you can see Arlington and Alexandria just across the Potomac River from Washington. Virginia has a really strange way of doing cities and counties and it really comes to light when you look at these two places. So in Virginia, places like Virginia Beach or Norfolk or Newport News or Richmond are cities, but they're not part of a county. So based on the way that Virginia does things, it makes sense that Alexandria is a city, but not part of a county. However, Arlington is a county, but not a city. So even though from a geography standpoint, Arlington is a city, from a jurisdictional standpoint, it's not, it's a county. So that's just one more way that Virginia messes with the census and makes it a little more difficult to manage population stats. Next, I want to talk about the location of Chinatown and Little Italy in Manhattan. The southern end of Manhattan is downtown, and just north of the financial district is where you have Chinatown and Little Italy. These two neighborhoods are directly adjacent to each other, and one basically fades into the other. On the opposite end of the country, San Francisco is another city that has a large Chinese and Italian immigrant history. And just like in Manhattan, once you go north of the financial district in San Francisco, you get to Chinatown. And directly adjacent to Chinatown is Little Italy. It's probably just a coincidence, but it is very interesting that Little Italy and Chinatown are directly adjacent to each other in both New York and San Francisco. So if you're walking around this part of town in either one of these cities, you have a lot of great options for food. If you know of any other cities where Little Italy is directly adjacent to Chinatown, basically by crossing a street going from one to the other, let me know. Alright, from a segue of talking about San Francisco and New York, we'll talk about the moon. If you're curious how big the moon is, the diameter is about 2,159 miles or 3,476 kilometers, which makes the diameter of the moon approximately the same as the width of the contiguous U.S. So in other words, if you drive from San Francisco to New York and then back, it's the same as driving around the entire moon. So now a little quirk about the names of the Great Lakes. There are five Great Lakes, and the state of Michigan and the province of Ontario are the ones that border the most. But an interesting quirk is that Lake Michigan is the only one that doesn't border Ontario, 
and Lake Ontario is the only one that doesn't border Michigan. And the last little quirk I want to mention is in reference to rural America. You'll often hear about small town rural America and how it's different than big city urban America. And there are many features of small town rural America that you'll find all throughout the country regardless of geography. However, I'd like to point out that Key West, Florida is in fact small town rural America. So the next time somebody wants to pigeonhole small towns, remind them of Key West, otherwise known as the Conk Republic. So there it is, the third installment of Oddities of U.S. Geography. And again, I'll leave the links to the other videos in the description box. You can check those out. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up so let me know you approve. And subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about U.S. Geography. I'm talking about cities and counties and states and comparing them and ranking them in all kinds of different categories. Talking about cross-country road tripping and everything I talk about comes from a little more nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.